All right, Basidio Mycetes, the club fungi. Uh, here we have some typical, fairly typical looking mushrooms. Uh, what's this part called? The cap, what's this? The stalk, what's underneath the cap? Gills, gills. And so uh, here we see some gills underneath the cap. And uh, that's where the reproduction, reproductive action is. Uh, and those gills, we'll see how. Uh, a little bit with this video and a whole bunch with your final video in this uh, in this lesson. And so the the cap and the stalk and underneath the cap are these gills. And uh, when you look at the gills through a microscope, you see this. Here's what's this in the round thing? That would be part of the stalk. This is a slice of the cap. These long thin structures are gills. We see uh, little round things attached to the gills. Uh, during part of the life cycle, and those are, what do you suppose? It's a good bet with kingdom fungi. If you're looking at little round things, they are spores. Yes, they are. We'll see how all that fits together. And uh, and so, uh, the cap, the stalk, and the gills. Speaking of uh, mushrooms, um, when you see a mushroom above ground, what is below ground? Well, here's a picture from your book. Below ground is a mycelium. So anytime you see a mushroom above ground, there is a full-fledged mycelium below ground. What is that mycelium doing below ground? Doing the fungal thing. Decomposing dead plant and animal material, maybe little bugs, uh, parts of leaves, grass, you know, dead roots, whatnot. Decomposing dead stuff below the soil. What's the function of the mushroom? Reproduction. Reproduction. You see spores here. We'll see how all that goes down. But again, the uh, it's called a fruiting body here, a mushroom. You see a mushroom above ground, there is a mycelium below ground. The mushroom only pops up when conditions are just right. Uh, but that mycelium, it stays there year-round, really, until it uses up all the, the dead stuff beneath the soil. Uh, speaking of mushrooms, should you go out and collect mushrooms and... Uh, uh, you know, bring them home to eat. Absolutely, I do it all the time. Go out and collect mushrooms, and uh, I do collect. I'm a little picky about where I collect them. Uh, I usually collect them in a place kind of like this. Yeah, right. No, you don't want to go out and collect mushrooms. That's like Russian roulette. You read about families, oh, every year or so, that uh, thought they were smart enough to figure out which ones are poisonous and which weren't, and uh, some of them uh, paid to. Uh, Paid a terrible price for that mistake. No, I would never do it unless they look like this. And uh, this is another picture from your book. Oh, actually, it's from another textbook. But uh, this is a weird-looking mushroom. Technically speaking, it's not. Uh, oh, I suppose you can call it a mushroom. It's commonly called a mushroom. It's not a basidiomycete. It's another major group of fungi called the sac fungi or ascomycetes. But, boy, you're not going to mistake that for the other kind of mushroom that we've been looking at. That's uh, weird looking. But uh, morels, they're called morels. Uh, they are considered one of the world's top two delicacies as far as mushrooms are concerned. They grow in the wild. If you're lucky, you know where to find some. Uh, and uh, uh, no one has figured out how to cultivate them yet, so you have to find them in the wild. And they do grow lots of places. Uh, so you can look up morels if you want to. Uh, this lesson will not be on morels. Other than morels, I would not pick a mushroom uh, out in the wild to eat. I would pick them up at Homeland. And so we have this picture from your textbook, the life cycle of a basidiomycete. I'm going to give you a simpler version. I want to point out a few features of it, however, uh, that we you can refer to as we draw our simpler version. And that is, we're going to start with a couple spores. Now, that's supposed to be a spore there, that's supposed to be a spore there. How come one's labeled, one's black and one's white? Well, we'll see. But uh, we notice that uh, we have uh, mitosis here. Is it mitosis with or without cytokinesis? Ooh, we see each nucleus in its own cell. So mitosis with cytokinesis. And we see black nuclei here and white nuclei here. What's the deal with that? The deal with is this. At some point in the life cycle, those new, those uh, hyphae combine forces to form a new type of thread, new type of hypha, in which there are two nuclei per cell. And so they've got one label, one drawn black, one drawn white, to show that one came from one original uh, 
uh, Haifa. One came from the other original Haifa, one from the each original spore. And so, two nuclei uh, per cell. That's called the dikaryotic phase. What do you suppose that means? Di means two, karyotic. Okay. And so, when conditions are right, those hyphae pop up a mushroom. Remember the mycelium below ground, the mushroom above ground. And so the mushroom, mushroom is shown as having gills. And the action is along the edge of the gills, right along the edge. And, uh, and what's happening? Well, something that sort of looks like a club is formed. Oh, yeah, club fungi. And we even have fertilization. And we have meiosis and spore formation. And then the spores break off. And they go floating off in the breezes. Whoop, there they land. A couple of them landed right there. And the cycle goes round and round. I want to key in on these little club-looking things right here. These club-looking things uh, in this next picture from uh, another textbook, not yours. And uh, first of all, in somewhat lower magnification, every one of those little bumps on the edge there is somebody thought they looked like a club. And how many spores are attached to each club? Four. Four spores per club, and uh, and so it here here it is up closer, a uh, textbook picture, and not from yours, from another textbook. This little bump here would be a club, and there are four spores attached. You say, Professor LEC2. Well, there might be a couple in the background there, or they might have been knocked off. When the knife goes through the fungus, it knocks the spores all over the place. But originally, uh, this club had four spores attached, four spur spores per club. So how many spores does a mushroom produce? Bazillions and bazillions and bazillions. In fact, in our last picture here, we see what's called a spore print. This is from a uh, plant biology textbook. How is this made? Someone took the cap off a fresh mushroom, laid it on a white piece of paper, and left it there for quite a few days. And the spores broke off the clubs, floated down, right straight down on that piece of paper, creating this pattern. How many spores do you suppose it took to make this pattern? I don't know, bazillions and bazillions. So mushrooms produce bazillions of spores that normally go off in the breezes. And uh, in our final video, the next video, we will see how that all works. All right, that concludes our little, our little look at uh, uh, actual pictures of Basidiomyces.